happy to be your lay leader today. Let us begin today by joining in the call to worship, which comes from one of today's suggested readings from Roman 12, verses 3 through 8. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let us, as one body in Christ, be ardent in spirit, not lag in zeal, rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Truth. 
in small and large ways, we are overwhelmed by what we cannot do. One fact remains that does not change. God has loved you, loves you now, and will love you always. This is the good news that brings us new life. Let's continue our time of prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, our country, our state, and our community. Pray for our church's relevance in our community and the world beyond. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace for all. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those who in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for people living in isolation, especially those who are unable to see loved ones due to the pandemic. Pray for those who need to be touched by a loving hand. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Dear God, we raise up the names of these people to remind us that in our living and in our dying, we are not alone. We pray for the friends and family of the following who have passed. Anne Gruska, Claudia Brown, Connie Robital, Ray Robital, Stephen Sweeney, Kathleen Bloomfield, Ben Lavois. I ask for your prayers for the following church and community members in need of your healing grace. Doug Cook, Ruth Kelly, Polly Cole, Joan Sweeney, Jane Ferrelli, Annie Payette, Ethel Cooper, Betty Day, Ian Adam Farrell, Don Giroux. I ask that you be present with the people of Beirut as they grapple the, with the recent disaster. We ask that you be present with those suffering from coronavirus. We ask you that you be present with teachers, parents, and administrators as they grapple with the task of school reopening. Amen. Today's scripture lesson is from the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 through chapter 2, verse 10. It is a bit long, but please bear with me. I promise it will lead somewhere later. Now, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than me. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or we will or they will increase and in event of war join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pentham and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them was named Shipra and the other Pua. When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill them. If it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. Her sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her 
attendants walked beside her. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named, his, named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Next, 
Moses' sister suggests that she find a wet nurse for the baby among her people, and the Pharaoh's daughter not only agrees, but pays Moses' actual birth mother to nurse him and raise her own son. Now that is no small gift. It is here where Moses is taught Judaism and what his duties are as a Jew. If Pharaoh's daughter had taken the infant Moses back to her palace and hired a wet nurse of her choosing, he would not have become the important figure of the Old Testament that he came to be. Of course, we do not know how many other Hebrew mothers were grieving for their newborn sons at the same time. I cannot fathom the loss of a child, especially a newborn infant, at the hands of oppressors. I do not mean to sugarcoat the horrific acts against the Hebrew people by any means, but I think we can all agree that Moses was more than a small gift to his people. Small gifts. I saw a cartoon the other day, it kind of went like this. From here on out, if we ask someone how they are doing and they say, I'm having a 2020 kind of day, we all know they're having a very crap day. Our world, our country, our state, our community, our church, our schools, our families are all having a very crap year. The turmoil has taken a toll on all of us. We are living in a constant state of anxiety and isolation. People are dying without families allowed at their bedside. Parents are unable to visit their grown children. Grandparents are unable to see their grandchildren. People living alone have gone months without physical human contact as handshaking and hugging are no longer allowed. Sorry, but zooming just doesn't make it cut it. It is not even a close replacement for a good hug, kiss, or even a back scratch. Dan and I also seem to be battling this very powerful force called inertia. In this 2020 year, we haven't been to the Colonial Wants, which is our favorite summer hangout. Not one concert, not one movie. We can count on less than one hand the number of restaurants we have been to this summer that wasn't a food truck or takeout. It is very difficult to force yourself off the couch when it's hot and humid and the only places you can go are outside. Let's set all this turmoil and anxiety aside for a moment. Let's look for the small gifts that our current situation has given us. Have you all noticed the increase of birds, butterflies, and bees this year? It has been a bumper crop year. Or has it? We are home. We have slowed down. We are outside in our gardens or making repairs on the house. Our family has gotten so much joy watching the wildlife strolling across our property than we ever have. Deer, turkeys, chipmunks, lots of chipmunks, rabbits, and even a bobcat. Still haven't seen any bats flying overhead, but there have been numerous hawk sightings. Most likely the same hawk, but many sightings nonetheless. In Paula's message last week, she tells us about the numerous friends she has lost in the past few years. These deaths have been losses to all the women in her ever-expanding knitting circle, which includes myself. The first name on today's prayer list, Andruska, is the most recent name added to the list. She was an artist, knitter, spinner, teacher, friend. When she heard about Dan's diagnosis of male breast cancer last year, she gave him one of her many healing hearts that she made and gave away. Dan keeps this heart in his bathrobe pocket and checks for it every morning. It was a small gift, one he appreciates every day, even more so now. Our favorite summer activity is camping. From the end of the school year, we have a home a week, camping a week routine that quite frankly becomes exhausting. Camping has been about the only normal thing we have been able to continue during 2020. We never tire of seeing baby loons and baby ducks swimming after their mothers on whatever lake or pond we are paddling or swimming. This year, we have brought our three-year-old granddaughter, Ariana, camping with us, speaking of small gifts. It has been a gift of time spent with a little sister that Leilani doesn't see as often as she would like. Ariane is a great little camper and it has been a gift getting to know her. 
If you did not know this, I'm telling you now, Dan and I love to have friends over for dinner. We love going to, going to friends' houses for dinner. But once again, this is on the no-no list for a tumultuous 2020 year. It gets really boring cooking dinner for only yourself day after day. With all this extra time at home, we have made some pretty fantastic meals, but food is always better in the company of good friends, isn't it? But you know what? Because of 2020, we have devised a social distancing plan that we all love. Why? Because it is simple. There's no stress of cooking a meal or cleaning the house. We gather at an appropriate distance on a lawn or driveway, around a fire pit or not, bring in our own chairs and beverage and socialize until dark. It is simple. It is a gift. No matter how dark the clouds, no matter the turmoil around or within us, we need to seek out the small gifts that are right under our noses. We need to appreciate these small gifts and hold them dear to our hearts. God's love, gift of love for us is all around us. He holds us dear to his heart. We need to take the time to do the same. May it be so. We close with the benediction. Lord God, may we stop to enjoy the simple gift of your love. May we take this gift and transform it into simple gifts of love and caring into the world. Amen.